Hi there, let's say you're uh, home by yourself on a Friday night and you've got nothing better to do, apparently, than weak acid and strong base titrations. Well, I'm sorry, me too. <laughs> All right, well, I'm getting ready for a test and uh, I thought I'd do some practice work. Here's what I've got, 150 milliliters of 0 0.250 molar citric acid whose acid constant, I looked it up on Wikipedia, so it must be true, is 7.24 times 10 to the negative fourth power. And I'm gonna titrate that with <clears throat> my prepubescent cracking voice, uh, 0 0.150 molar sodium hydroxide. So we know it's a strong base. We know that it's, uh, the citric acid is a weak acid. And uh, let's just see what it looks like before any titration takes place. So before the, the uh, titration, I'm going to have, uh, well, let's just set up the equation. Okay, My reaction is going to be the acetic acid breaks down into its conjugate base, the, uh, the uh, anion, plus the uh, hydrogen ion. right? Okay. And initially, it's going to look like this, 0 0.250 molar. It's my concentration. Okay. And before any reaction takes place, there's none, none of this and there's none of this. Okay. But the change that will take place is going to be this going down by a certain amount, some x, and this is going to go up by an x, and this is going to go up by an x too. I think we've done this before, so it shouldn't be too fast right here. All right, now this is where we're going to add it all together for the uh, final result, and it's going to be the original molarity minus some number and then this is x and this is x and this means we've got a quadratic equation we can solve if we want to do it the hard way I guess uh, but now nah, we don't want to do it the hard way so we'll just put in the acid constant here and we'll say 7.24 times 10 to the negative fourth that's our acid constant from up above is going to be equal to the products multiplied by each other okay so that's the uh, cation and the, and, and the anion from the uh, citric acid x squared after the reaction is complete, divided by this concentration here. Rather than do a quadratic, since x is going to be pretty teeny, and you can verify that later, I'm going to go ahead and assume that it is small, and we're going to say it's about equal to 7.24 times 10 to the negative fourth. Multiply that by just 0 0.250, and that'll give us, if I take the square root, multiply, and all that good stuff, this number right here. Okay. All right. That is also our hydronium or our hydrogen ion concentration, which is really handy because we can use that to calculate our pH just by taking the negative log of the concentration of our hydrogen ions, right? So I do the math in my head, of course, and I get this number right, right, this number right here, and let's uh, let's move on. Okay, so that oh, yeah yeah didn't want to do that just yet. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is see what happens if I'm going to add in a, a little bit of the sodium hydroxide. I want to see how it reacts. Okay, so let's move down here a little bit. A lot. Take note of this pH of 1.871 because it, it'll be important later. Okay, so adding uh, 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide of the concentration we mentioned above is going to be a different reaction we're going to have to look at first. You might just be tempted to add it into another rice reaction, but we need to take into account the fact that this strong base is going to completely dissociate with whatever acid is available. So let's just take a look at what that should appear like. 50 milliliters of the 0 0.150 sodium hydroxide. Okay. And here I want to deal with it not in concentrations, but I want to look at the actual uh, moles present. So I just multiply these together, and I get this number right here. Okay, 7.5 millimoles of sodium hydroxide. All right, now I'm going to write out the equation again, only this time I'm going to show what it looks like uh, adding, the, uh, uh, adding the sodium hydroxide. Okay, and now I have my citric acid aqueous, we're doing this all in water, and I'm adding it to the sodium hydroxide. If you're writing a net ionic equation, you'd end up with just the OH, and that's kind of how we're going to treat that here. And it's going to be an equilibrium reaction now, and we're going to show uh, that breaking into the net ionic equation. So here's my uh, ion, my anion from the citric acid, and the rest of it just turns to water, right? Because this uh, one of these H's will come off here. You see that it changed from H8 to H7. So that other H combined with the OH, and it gives us water liquid, which we'll ignore for the rest of this. And this will be important, this piece here, though. So now 
what I want to do is see what happens before the reaction takes place. And I've got 150 milliliters of this 0 0.250 molar um, sodium hydroxide. Why did I put that there? No, oh, I confused my numbers. Ignore that for a minute. Okay, so I've got 37.5 millimoles, multiplying those out. And over here, I'm doing the same thing, okay, giving me 7.50 millimoles of the sodium hydroxide, right? 50 milliliters times 0 0.150, and this is 150 milliliters, uh, which was there to begin with. We're pouring the sodium hydroxide into the citric acid. Okay, now, initially, there isn't going to be any of this, right? And once the change starts to take place, what we're going to see is that this entire sodium hydroxide is going to be consumed by the citric acid. That's what I'm showing here. Okay, same moles. These moles come out of here. Okay. And it's subtracted here too. And it's going to show up over here as an anion. And the water, we just don't care. All right, because it's liquid, right? All right, now the last step is we're going to show afterwards, after they mix, I'll just add these together. So I've got 30 millimoles of citric acid. I've got nothing left here. I've acquired now 7.5 millimoles of the citric acid anion. And uh, now I need to take into account the volume of the total solution, right? Because I started out with 50 milliliters here, and I've got, uh, what did I say it was? 50 milliliters. Uh, oh, yeah, well, let's just, let's just write it out. So I've got 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, and I'm combining that with 100 milliliters of citric acid that were there already. Did I say 100 milliliters? Because that seems screwy. Let's just double check. Oh, uh, no, no, boo. Okay, this, this should have been uh, 150, right? So give me just a second here. Okay, so I've got my 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. I'm going to add that to 150 milliliters of citric acid that were there uh, that were there already, and that comes out to 200 milliliters. That's going to be important for grabbing concentrations later on. And so I'm going to come down here, and uh, well, now it's come to this. Wait, that was supposed to be more dramatic. Now it's come to this. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh no. Because what what do we have to do? Well, we have to do a pretty hairy rice table, right? Harry quadratic equation monster. Yes, I even have one right here. Look. Uh, whoa. All right. So there, there are two ways you could do this, right? You could go ahead and do a rice table. You gotta see the whole monster first, though. That's that's pretty awesome, right? Okay. So the the uh, reaction uh, would look the same. I've got my 150 plus 200. Yeah, that's that's notes that I should have paid attention to earlier, but. I'm going to set up my rice table again. The reaction looks like this. Okay, It's going to be an equilibrium reaction. And I'm going to take my 30 milliliters, or millimoles, excuse me, because I multiplied them out. And I'm going to take my uh, millimoles here. That's what that's supposed to say right here. And then this is zero to begin with. And I, you know, a certain amount goes down just like we did before. This is, I, I'm going through this fast because who really wants to do it this way? I don't, there's an easier way to do it. I could add the X here and then like this, add them all together, blah, 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 blah. And yes, now if it were only this easy, right? If we're done for you every time, that'd be nice. And you couldn't make any money at it, of course. So that, that's a problem, but maybe you don't like money. So here we go. If, if you want to do it that way, you can, that's the hard way. Okay, but since this is essentially a buffer solution, take a look at it. You say I put that in, I've got an equilibrium reaction. Uh, then I can use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation, and that greatly simplifies things because I don't have to go through the acid constant and everything all over again. Well, I sort of do. I'm going to start out again with just the pH is equal to the pK, which is the negative log of the acid constant that we had up above. Okay, and that is going to be added to the uh, log of the base, which is going to be the conjugate base up here, right, of the citric acid, okay, divided by the volume, sort of, you'll see it doesn't matter here in a second, of the acid, 
right? And, and we're dealing in moles per the total volume of the liquid. Make sure you don't just put the 150 we began with uh, or else you get it wrong. And you'll notice right here something convenient that the 200, uh, uh, that should be milliliters right there, cancel out, but it really doesn't matter. I could put 200 monkeys there, I guess, if I wanted because there's one on the top and one on the bottom and it's a value of one, who cares, right? Maybe you shouldn't experiment with monkeys, I don't know. Some people do. All right, this is stupid, so let's move on. Uh, the pH plus the pKa, so I just ran the math here, plus this, only the, you know 7.5 divided by 30, take the log of that, it's going to be a negative number. I add those together, and this gives me my total pH for the solution. I think my math's right there, but check me and let me know. Uh, is that more acidic or more basic? Well, a little brain check or a fact check here. We started out with a pH of 1.871. So if we're adding something like a pretty concentrated sodium hydroxide to that, we'd expect the number to become more positive because if you get, get closer to, to 1, right, you're going to be looking at a highly acidic solution. So the more sodium hydroxide we add here, the more basic the solution will become. But it's still pretty acidic. Thanks for watching. Bye.